made it live and it's taking forever. all our mail we've got? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. My trip was really good. We had a really good time. I loved their weather. Is it? Oh, thank God. I love their weather. It was a, uh, my weather here is like no wind. It's just heat and it's humid and yucky so being there and the air was like so easy to breathe and it was just so windy and perfect so it was really uh it was really good they took us to a water park i've done a lot of things that uh i would have never done they made me walk on a bridge that was in the trees i did not like that at all. And I made it known <laughs> that I did not like it. You go, Cassie. Good morning. Yeah, I made it known that I did not like it at all. They should know that by now. If I'm not going to like it, I'm going to tell you. I sure will. Yes. And I did. I complained enough for all of us. I did. I did do it. But in my defense, there was no way out but through. Yes. Um, the kids done pretty good. My daughter was probably worse than my son. But um, they did good. I would still be sitting on the side. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, I went to Wisconsin. The water park we went to was Land of Nutra. Something like that. I went down a water slide and almost died. That did happen. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that water slide was wild. It was fun. But I held my nose. And then I got to the end of that. And I hit the water so powerfully. My hand went off of my nose. And then all the water in the, in the place went up my nose. I'm pretty sure. Every bit of it. Every bit of the water went up my nose, and it hurt a lot. And I was like, what's the symptoms of dry drowning? Because it could be me. <laughs> and they were dying laughing. Um, of course they were. My kids were so excited to see me, they just both ran up and hugged me. I did bring them something back, but nothing big. So that was fun. I can't remember all the other funny things that happened. You and Charity together, you know there was a, a plethora of funny moments. Yeah, we were laughing. <laughs> Steve swore on that plane, my friends. Oh, my gosh. Steve swore we went over a big lake, and it looked like a big ocean, which it's bigger than some oceans, so Chris says. And... You could see, like, the waves, you know, the water rippling. Steve was like, there was a fish down there. There was no fish down there, Steve. 
There was. It was a fish. I seen it jump out of the water. Stupid. You can't even read the letters in your Bible. How are you going to see a fish from this far up in the air? That's what Charity said. She was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. She said, can't read your Bible. We can totally see fish from all the way up in the air. And I was, <laughs> and I was like, exactly. Like, we were dying. She was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I was like, yeah, right, exactly. I was like, Steve, that's waves. He's like, nope, it's fish jumping out of the water. No, it's not. <laughs> it is not fish jumping out of the water. Like, what are you talking about, Steve? Like, it was, oh, Lord. And then our ride there was really bumpy. And I was like, I don't remember riding a plane like that. I don't remember a plane ride being so bumpy. I said, but it's been a little bit since I've been on a plane, so maybe it, maybe it is now. Like, I don't know. Um, very, very bumpy. But turns out it was just our ride there because our ride back was excellent, not bumpy, but he got a lot higher than the other one did. Um, he could go 40,000 feet and he went up to, he went up to 36,000 feet. So we were straddling the line of survival, but we made it. So, you know, but, uh, it was really funny. It was really funny. Like, when, but bless our hearts, because when we was about to take off, <laughs> the, the, the plane was making noises. I was about to, uh, I, it made a noise. And I was like, oh, no. So we need to pray. And then it made a worse noise. And me and this teenager locked eyes, and we were like, we might not make it off his plane. And I was like, I told you we should pray, Steve. And we bowed our head and prayed. And y'all know my prayer sounded like, Lord, it was horrible. I was like, Lord, please get me off this plane. Lord, protect your other children on this plane. I said, man, I should have prayed for them first. Sorry, Lord. Like, I said, that is what <laughs> I was like dying. I was like, man. Oh, gosh, I gotta pray for them first. <laughs> then me. Like, I was dying. I was like, oh, gosh. And Steve was over there praying the whole time. But when we finally got that far up, we were good. There was no more turbulence, and it went well. But I'll tell you what if he didn't slam on his brakes all the way up in the air. At one point, it felt like he hit his brakes, and we were just float on God's favor. Me and Steve looked at each other like, what? Get ready to go down. I mean, it was it was something. Yeah. Go to Dollywood. <sighs> yes, Cassie. I want to do that. And see, that's a good vacation because I can drive. I can drive. Imagine that. I mean, I'd get back on a plane. I'd get back on a plane. I think Steve said, I said, are you all right? You know, on our on our way back, we're getting ready to take off. Are y'all right? Good morning. He said, oh, yeah, I'm a pro at this now. I said, oh, okay. I said, so we're going to fly everywhere? He said, no. <laughs> I said, I didn't think so. Not such pros, you know, are we? Like, it was funny. But, Wisconsin was really pretty then. I would live, I told them that I would love to live there like a couple months out of the year, no joke. Because they had this, uh, in their little downtown, they had this, I loved it. It was a walking trail, so to say, I guess. But it was on both sides of this big river, and there was a beautiful dam, and all the water came over, and you had to walk across the bridge to like go back. And I don't know. I loved that. I would walk that every morning. I sure would. With a with pod a podcast in my ears. Yeah. Like, that was the best thing ever. Um, I don't know. That might have been my favorite part because it was just, it was so pretty. And the wind was blowing, so you're not dying of a heat stroke like you do here. And it was just, I don't know. I was like, I love this. I do this all the time. I do this all the time. Uh, it was great. So, I would, when I go back, I would love to do that. Just walk that with a podcast in my ears. Best thing ever. Planes aren't that bad. My husband is 53 or 54, and that was his first time ever being on a plane, and he done great.
I didn't, Adrian. I gotta get my life together, Adrian. Don't you know? Don't you know? We're gonna be on page 93. We're gonna be talking about the temple, and we're gonna be reading Ezra 6. Um, that's gonna be our... I gotta go find it. That's our second. again. I'd do it again. Uh, for being angry at someone. I mean, it's natural to be angry at people, but we definitely can't let that anger take hold because anger isn't, uh, it's not going to lead to anything good in any of your relationships. You know, the Bible does tell us to be angry and sin not. Yes. However, it also says don't let the sun go down on your anger. Right. So, yep. going to God with your anger and handing it over to Him will help you calm down. Yep. Yep. We're in Ezra. I didn't end up going to the corn festival. We ended up staying by the pool and then I got burnt. How do you go to Missouri or Wisconsin and get burnt? There's still sun there. Still. I know, but it was like, I didn't go for that. <laughs> I didn't go for that. Brad, we are praying. They want you to read your note from number four from Friday. Oh, that was homework. It was homework. So, yeah. are you saying you didn't do it? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little busy. She, she was. She was taking all. care of my children. <laughs> she was She was a little busy taking care of my children. She don't got nothing for first homework. She didn't do her homework. To, it, in my defense, it wasn't the children that were uh, keeping me so busy. It was Charlie. Okay. It was Charlie. It was Charlie. I love that, Cassie. I love that. All right, are y'all ready? We're going to be talking about the temple. The temple was rebuilt without its original grandeur. Today's reading is going to be Ezra 6, and the verse is 614. So the elders of the Jews continued to build and prosper under the preaching of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, a descendant of so-and-so. They finished building the temple according to the command of the, of the God of Israel and the decrees of Cyrus Darius, Darius? Yeah, and Art. Axerus, sure, king of Persia. Did anybody do the homework? Yeah, that's a good question. She was busy on the board. <laughs> <Did you imagine? laughs> True story. That's Ezra six fourteen. We need to get to reading. Oh boy, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to read all this. I could have slept in today, friends. Charity didn't let me sleep in. Of course she did. Maybe one day. One day I woke up at nine. She said, one day I did. Right. Okay. <laughs> She cooked me breakfast every morning, though. It was pretty. It was good. Yes. I didn't have to worry about dinner. Nothing. All right. Y'all ready? We're going to read. So, King Darius issued orders that, that a search be made in the Babylonian archives, which were stored in the treasury. But it was at the fortress of so-and-so in the province of Meta that a scroll was found. 
This is what it said. How do you say that word? Memorandum. Memor Memorandum. Okay. In the first year of King Cyrus Regain, a decree was sent out according to the temple of God at Jerusalem. Let the temple be rebuilt on a site where Jews used to offer their sacrifices. Using the original foundations, its height will be 90 feet. Its width will be 90 feet. Every three layers of specifically prepared stone will be topped by a layer of timber. All expenses will be paid by the royal treasury. Furthermore, the gold and silver cups, which were taken to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar from the temple of, of God in Jerusalem, must be returned to Jerusalem and put back where they belong. Let them be taken back to the temple of God. So King Darius sent this message. Now, therefore, governor of the province west of Eperates River and... That place. And your colleagues and other officials west of the river, stay away from there. Do not disturb the construction of the temple of God. Let it be rebuilt on its original site. And do not hinder the governor of Judah and the elders of the Jews in their work. Moreover, I hereby decree that you are to help these elders of the Jews as they rebuild this temple of God. You must pay the full construction cost without delay from my taxes collected in the province west of that place, the river, so that the work will not be interrupted. Give the priests in Jerusalem whatever is needed in the way of young bulls, rams, and male lambs for the burnt offerings presented to God of heaven. And without fail, provide them with as much wheat, salt, wine, olive oil as they need each day. Then they will be able to offer acceptable sacrifices to the God of heaven and pray for the welfare of the king and his sons. Those who violate this degree in any way will have a beam pulled from their house. They will be lifted up and impaled on it. Okay, got it. I, loud and clear. Received, buddy. And their house will be reduced to a pile of rubble. That took a turn. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. May the king, may the God who has chosen the city of Jerusalem as a place to honor his name, destroy any king or nation that violates this command and destroys this temple. I, Darius, have issued this degree. Let it be obeyed with all diligence. Hold on. Can't get my page to turn. Don't know that word. The governor of the province west of the river and their colleagues complained at once with the command of King Darius. So the Jews' elders continued their work and they were greatly encouraged by the preaching of the prophet Haggai and Zechariah. The temple was finally finished as it had been commanded by God of Israel and, decre and decre decreed by Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxius, sure, the king of Persia. The temple was completed on March 12th during the sixth year of King Darius or King. The temple of God was then dedica dedicated with great joy by the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, the rest of the people who had returned from exile. During the dedication ceremony for the temple of God, 100 young bulls, 200 rams, and 400 male lambs were sacrificed, and 12 male goats were presented as a sin offering for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then the priests and the Levites were divided into their various divisions to serve the temple of God in Jerusalem as prescribed in the book of Moses. Okay. Words are hard for me. I don't, I can't read them how they're supposed to be said if you're new here because uh, I am very much so dyslexic and words don't work for me, for lack of better words. Um, on April 21st, the return the returned exile celebrated Passover. The priests and Levi, I can't say that, um, purified themselves and were ceremonially clean. So they slaughtered the Passover lamb for all the returned exiles, for their fellow priests, and for themselves. The Passover meal was eaten by the people of Israel who had returned from exile, by the others in the land who had, tur who had turned from their corrupt pra practices to worship the Lord. 
the God of Israel. Then they celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. There was great, great joy throughout the land because the Lord had caused the king of Assyria to be favorable with it, to them and that he helped them rebuild the temple of God, the God of Israel. Well, that was a good chapter about the temple being rebuilt. Again, I don't know. I just, I feel like I would have chose different chapters. Yeah. For so far, I mean, but who am I to say? So, let's just see where they're going with this. Um, the, Israelite, the Israelite exiles felt lost and alone without the temple. Because they knew as long as the temple was with them, God's presence was with them. But in an instant, it was gone, totally destroyed. Knowing their hearts, God sent messengers to speak words of hope to sustain them. When you are discouraged, what encourages you? I put knowing God's promises and getting in His Word. I've noticed a pattern. This, Euphrates, Euphrates, Euphrates River. Is that right? Look at me go. Um, and Daniel, the gold was still in Neb's possession. Yes. Look at that. See, y'all gotta write it with when I the way I can see letters. Watch that. I'm gonna write it for real, like that in in my Bible, so that I can. Y'all be knowing how to break things down for me. Where'd it go? Here it is. I need to write it how she wrote it. Euphrates. River. Ha ha ha. Got it. The pattern I'm noticing is I don't like the way that these have been laid out, but I see why. Like, it's been this same writer the whole time. Um, Eric, and whatever his last name is, um, he's wrote this. And have you not noticed that all of his questions are personal reflections, not study questions? Like, our questions before were like, the people's rejection of God as their king uh, is quite... Prophetic, read John 19, 1, 1 through 16, and explain what's happening here, right? Like, I like those types of questions. The questions that make you dig for answers, uh, like list the fruits of the Spirit, read Matthew 11, 28 through 30, what does it say about rest? All of these that he has wrote have just simply been reflection questions that I haven't answered, really, because... I can talk about it, but I don't have to write it down. Um, I don't really like that, but we're going to keep going. So, what encourages you? Uh, a lot of you said reading your Bible encourages you. Um, Alicia, we're doing page 93 of our read of our 40 days through the Bible. Um, some of you said reading the Bible. Again, that's going to be a, a thing. Um, what encourages me when I am discouraged is getting in, getting in my word and doing some Bible journaling and letting the Lord really speak and getting quiet with him. Um, I find that that's the best way to get encouraged again is to get along with him in scripture. Um, yes, studying with others. Yes, our friends. Yes, Nina. Surrounding myself with like-minded people in prayer. Yes, I love that prayer. Blasting worship music. Samesies. Um, getting into the Bible and journaling. Friends who have a relationship with God. My husband encourages me. Yes, I love that. Knowing God is always with me. Worship. I love that. Knowing God has my back. That I just have to trust Him and stand firm on His word. I love that. Well, you want to know? I'll show you something that encourages me. I have been reading... Um, First Kings, right? Because I told y'all I wanted to read all of First and Second Kings. 
I haven't got to read all of it, but um, I've read what I've could so far. But let me let me show y'all one of my things that I read that I love. Um, it is First Kings chapter eight, okay, and it's verse twenty two. Through, I mean, it's long. It is so long. So, you'll have to read it for yourself. I think it is uh, 65 verses. Nope, 66. So, it's going to be 22 through 66. But did you know that when Solomon, after the temple was built, and um, he went in and he stood before the altar, and it literally talks about him worshiping. He stood before the altar, he lifted his hands towards heaven, and he bowed down and he prayed. And do you want to know what he prayed? For the people. He prayed for God's favor on the people, even though they wasn't going to be good all the time. Like part of it says, Lord God, there is no other like you in heaven uh, above or on earth below. You keep your covenant and show unfailing love to all who walk before you in a wholehearted devotion. You have kept your promise to your servant, David, my father. Uh, and he talked about the promise that had been made to him, right? Which is that one of his sons would get to regain king right the another one of my favorite parts was uh i love verse 27 because solomon knew that the temple couldn't contain god it said but will god really live on earth why even the highest heavens cannot contain you how much less this temple i have built solomon knew that god wasn't limited to a temple but that he would dwell there ain't that good just so he could be with his people and then he said, nevertheless, listen to my prayer and my plea. Um, and he said, hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is making today. May you watch over this temple night and day, uh, this place where you have said, my name will be there. May you always hear the prayers I make towards this place. May you hear the humble and earnest requests from me and your people Israel when we pray towards this place. Yes, hear us from heaven where you live and when you hear, forgive. Like, he started praying for his people. Yeah, and it's this whole thing. Uh, verse 44, if your people go out where you send them to fight their enemies, and if they pray to the Lord by turning toward this city you have chosen and towards this temple I have built to honor your name, then hear their prayers from heaven and uphold their calls. Like, no, I'm not reading the King James Bible this morning. This is an NLT. Um, it is so good, though. Solomon is praying for his people and praying uh, for God to be with them in all types of situations. I mean, he prayed about all types of situations. When they turned back, um, he wanted to, he wanted to hear them. You know, if they turn back, but then they turn back to God, he said, Lord, hear them, forgive them. I mean, he just stood there and prayed in the temple with his hands up for his people. And I was like, that's good. And I love that. Like, I, I don't know, but those are things like there that, that, uh, look, and then chapter nine, which I haven't got, I stopped on chapter eight, I think. Um, but maybe not. But chapter nine is the Lord's response to Solomon. I know. And I was like, listen, um, Um, I will make Israel not to worry. And through the temple is impressive now. Those who pass by will be appalled and will grasp in horror. They will ask, why did the Lord do such terrible things to this land and to this temple? And the answer will be because his people abandoned the Lord their God who brought their ancestors out of Egypt. They worshipped other gods instead and bowed down to them. That is why the Lord has brought all these disasters on them. That still applies today, I do believe. I'll read it for you. They will ask, why did the Lord do such terrible things to this land and to this temple? And the answer will be because his people abandoned the Lord, their God, who brought their ancestors out of Egypt, and they worshipped other gods instead and bowed down to them. That is why the Lord has brought all these disasters upon them. Like, yeah, 
That's what we're dealing with in today's times. I'm just saying. Just saying. That's some good stuff, though. Um, it is 1 Samuel chapter 8 is where all that is. And then read chapter 9 too and see God's response and then figure out why God responded the way he did. But I don't know. I just, I loved that. And that encouraged me that when the Solomon got done, he, he prayed for his people, right? Like, I love that. We should always be praying for our people. It says, by this time, Pers Persia had defeated Babylon and taken over the entire regain. But a wonderful thing happened under this new regain. God gave the Israelites favor in the eyes of Babylonian leaders. Um, so the elders of the Jews continued to build and prosper under the preaching of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah, a descendant of so-and-so. Of, of so they finished building the temple according to the command of the God of Israel and the degrees of Cyrus, Darius, Art, Axerus, king of Persia. They always find, I always find it fascinating how constantly throughout history, God used men in earthly governmental positions to accomplish his plans. One scholar, M. Burnaman, 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 yeah, Okay, um, address this by saying the most powerful word on earth at the time was a degree of a Persian king. But silently and mysteriously, the king was being directed by an even more powerful divine word. Ooh, that's good. What does this imply about how we should treat those who are in government and in authority over us? I knew that was coming. Um, okay, so the Bible says that we should always respect authority and know that God has a plan. And even if you don't agree with how he's doing things, you have to be in alignment with he's doing what's best. And he will make good out of bad if, it, if it's not supposed to be that way. But even if he's still good right? It's a trusting. We should trust them. We should, we should trust God to do what he needs to do. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you don't like what's going on and you want it changed, instead of sitting around and complaining about it, you need to figure out how you can get to that position to be able to make the change yourself. Because maybe God's calling you. And I fully believe that. I think that if there are things that I want to see changed and things that, that I think could be better, then I think you need to be the change. I think you need to be the person who rises up and does that in your area. Right? Yes, Amber, I love that. I love that. But I do think we should just trust God with that. It's, you know, it's honestly, unless God's plan is involving me and he's talking directly to me about something I need to do, I just mind my business. And I just let God do his thing and I will do what he's called me to do. Lord, you are powerful over everything and mighty over all. You rule all. I'm just going to let you do you because you do it way better than I ever could, right? And I'm just going to focus on my mission. And I'm just going to focus on my lane. And I'm just going to focus on where I need to be. And I'm not going to pay any bit of attention to what everybody else is out here doing. The things that would usually, and this leads into a good point as well, not just with government, but when bad things start happening in the world, I don't focus on it. And I don't let it worry me out to death. I just pray about it, right? I pray for God's people just like Solomon because, but I'm not going to focus on it because God knows what's going on. He does. And at some point or another, Jesus will come back. And I'm just going to be ready. I'm just going to be ready. Is there anything I can do to stop storms? No. Is there anything I can do to prevent them from happening? No. Should I just let God do his work and mind my own business? Yes, I most definitely should. Until he calls me to do something. Because it's not going to do me any good to be fearful and scared for the rest of the days of my life. The Bible exactly says to 
not be afraid. 365 times, actually. One for every day of the year. Right? So why are we scared to death over everything? We're just going to let God do what he's supposed to do. Because he'll do it all exactly the way it needs to be done. And I will take care of my mission that he's called me to do that will bring glory to him where I am. Because that's what I can do, is what he's called me to, right? So just like government and, and authority, right, and stuff like that, let's just respect, you know, that, that God's got this under control and his plans are good. His plans are good and he's going to work it out and he'll bring glory to himself. But there's no need for me to sit around and be scared to death about it. Right? And working with your hands. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. The preaching and prophesying of Haggai and Zechariah and the leadership and hard work of Jerubabab. Huh? Jerubabab. Jerubabab. <laughs> That's what she said. Good. <laughs> yes, girlfriend. I love that. All right. Ezra and Nehemiah led to the rebuilding of a magnificent new temple, a temple that survived in various forms, even though the Greek and Roman in partial takeovers i think that word imperial thank you so what so what's so amazing is that hundreds of years before any of these events happened daniel dreamed about them he his dream centered around four beasts the four beasts represented the four nations we just studied they did mm -hmm. We covered a lot of history in a short amount of time. The truth seems clear. God used the visions, teachings, and prophesyings of Daniel, Ezekiel, Haggai, and Zechariah to inspire and encourage the people to stand together and to work hard and per persevere. Even when hard times fell upon them and enemies surrounded them, God also used pagan kings to open doors and provide the means for the work to be done. And best of all, God raised up three great leaders who worked, served, and led by the holy enthusiasm all Christians should share when they realize they're a part of God's plan. Amen. I love that. How was the preaching of God's word and or the passion of those leading you affected your life what are some of the ways you can see god's plan unfolding in your circumstances that's good i ain't got enough room you answer it anyway how has the preaching of god's word and or the passion of those leading you affected your life well i mean you i follow you and you're watching you Teach God's Word has greatly affected my life. It led me to where I am today. I've gotten so much closer to God. Um, you know, it tells us in His Word you are who you surround yourself with. And, yeah. Mm, stop it. I just, I don't have enough room on this paper to everything that God's doing in my life right now. Stop it. Well, what are some of the ways you can see God's plan unfolding in your circumstances? Angie, hmm? what are some of the ways you can see God's plan unfolding in your circumstances? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, like I posted on Facebook. Mm -hmm. The way he's changed my life is just one example. Five years ago, I wouldn't. You wouldn't want me in your house. You definitely wouldn't want me watching your children. But this weekend, I was in your home watching your children driving your car because God has changed my life so much and changed who I am. And it just, I'm in awe. I'm just in awe. The one thing that I have noticed is, uh, the one thing I have noticed is, Everybody that has 
commented on my stuff on TikTok, watched my videos, or in my membership. Even people that just stop by on these lives. The one thing they notice is how fired up I get for God. And because of that, they desire to have that as well. They want that same fire. And so I will say that, like, it rubs off on people. If they can see, and that is also the answer to why when people come to me and they're like, I want my friend to change, or I want my husband to change, or I want my wife to change, and they're not following the Lord, but I really want them to. That's why my answer is always get on fire for God. That's why my answer is always don't be nagging out. Nagging ain't gonna do nothing. Get on fire for God. Play the podcast right in front of them. Turn the music music up while you're cleaning your house. Like you change first. Get on fire for God first. Because when they see your fire, They'll want it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They'll want it. But you got to change first. You got to have that fire first. You got to have that that ability first to, to just, you got to build that relationship with God first because that relationship will completely fuel your life. It'll give you so much joy. It'll give you so many things. It'll bring so much to your life. And they will notice. They'll notice. And they'll want it too. And they'll change. And Alicia said it best. She said revival starts within. Yes. And finding you for a lot of us has started a revival in our souls. Because you are so fired up and on fire for God it has lit that fire within us. Mm -hmm. I like it. The The revival starts within. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Okay, does anybody have anything else they want to share? What are some of the ways you can see God's plan unfolding in your circumstances? Y'all, I just, y'all want to know one thing I struggle with? Um, I have a hard time answering these questions because... The only person that's ever led me is God himself. I don't have a human mentor. I don't. And sometimes I wish I did because I would love that type of advice that y'all come to me for. I don't have nobody to go to that for. I always go to the Lord for those answers. (laughs) Like, because he has directly been the one who's taught me. I do have Steve. You're right. And I do have Steve. But Steve's also my husband. Like, I don't have a mentor beyond that. It's just kind of, it's me and Steve. We're each other's mentors because otherwise we don't have one. Like, that's how me and Steve come together and have really good conversations. Because beyond that, me and Steve don't have anybody else in our life that's like that except for God, right? So, but in another sense, that's the best thing ever. Because so many people want that direct relationship with God like that, and I get and I, and I have one. Not that everybody does have a direct relationship with God, but a lot of you are affected by me. I didn't have somebody like myself that was excited about the Bible that got me into Bible journaling. I just did it, and it's the weirdest thing ever. I just picked up my Bible one day and did it. You know, so it's 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 different. You know what I mean? Um. Because just one day, I was like, I'm going to journal in my Bible. And it was going to change everything about my life, right? So, I have a hard time, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with either scenario that we're talking about right now. I'm just saying, when I get asked these questions, they're hard to answer. Because I'd write down God, you know? Like, that would be because He... He set me on fire for him. And also, I do believe that that was because of my, I had suffered so long and had gotten so low that he was going to be the only one that could get me out of there anyway. 
Like, you get what I'm saying? Which neither of them's wrong. I just don't have, my whole point is that I just listen to a bunch of different podcasts. I listen to a bunch of different podcasts. I listen to a bunch of different churches. I would go to different churches. I'd find a way for God to get in, but for the most important, the most of the time, I would journal in my Bible, and I can't tell you how that came about. Uh, I just did it, you know? So, uh, I have a hard time answering those questions, but I can very much so say that God's led every part of my life. Every part. And I think that that being your testimony is why you can lead so many of us. Because all you had to turn to was God. I mean, all you had was up. Yeah. And that's how you can lead all of us. True. True. You were for such a time as this. No, oh, stop it. Stop it. Um But so I do I do love that. Like God's word has has affected my life because it's changed who I am. From the very depths of my core out, right? And then it says, what are some ways you can see God's plan unfolding in your circumstances? Which one would you like? Right. Like, I mean, which one would you like? Would you like where I used to live in a trailer and that was 700 square foot because I couldn't afford anything else and how I moved in there without a, uh, without a bed because I sold everything that I had owned after I lost my home and then, and then, uh, my kids had bed, but I slept on the couch and then my very first big girl purchase was a bed and I was able to walk out of there with a brand new bed and I paid cash for it. Like, that was when God started. He said, oh, we're about to do stuff here. Watch this out. And then my life just started changing. And we got a bigger house and a bigger house. And then we were able to buy a house. And I mean, what part? What part do you want? Do you want the part where I was non-existent a year ago? To anybody, really. I was encouraging people, and I had a Facebook group, but in one year of God really touching my business, everything changed. Listening to God, my husband came home. I started to, I got to become a Bible teacher. Like, say what now? I do what now? You know, like, how did I do that? Because God. People say, how are you so knowledge? What Bible school did you go to? I didn't. I don't know. Your guess is good as mine. It's the Holy Spirit and the Lord. I I can't answer that. There are questions that I simply cannot answer. I studied my butt off. But the every everything else is simply just because he called. Like my life has been so crazy that if I wanted to tell you all of it. It has to be in a book. It has to be in a book. Because where he brought me from and where I am today, gosh, we could be here forever. It's so overwhelming. The overwhelming love of God. Man, if you haven't experienced it, then you don't even know yet where you're headed. Because when you get there, when you get to certain places in your life, you can't even put into words how you feel mm -hmm. because it's just so overwhelming. I mean, it's so good. I just. The awe that your animal yeah. was speechless. Yeah. For real. Yeah. 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 I am writing a book. Uh, the name of my book is going to be Through the Fire. <laughs> Stop it, Charity. The name of my book is going to be Through the Fire, but I have already started writing it. Harley, 
you're so funny because listen i have a five-year plan and part of my five-year plan well actually i got to continue writing my five-year plan today um but part of my five-year plan is um to have one of those houses but it ain't gonna be 700 square foot it's gonna be bigger than that um i hope these are, these are my hopes and dreams and working with the lord and uh partners that we are gonna have we're gonna do this but we're gonna have those homes and we're gonna provide it for people who have lost their homes and single mothers and people who just need it people who just need it we're gonna have that and we're gonna help them rehabilitate their life because and i know there's a lot of houses like that um but there's still a lot of people not getting help and some of the reason is because i had a friend she fell into our times uh and she had two kids, babies, mind you. But if you ain't never been a single mother trying to raise two kids and not have any support, you don't even have a clue, right? She was going homeless. She she was getting ready to lose her place because she couldn't get a job because nobody would, would hire. She couldn't get a job because she had nobody to watch her children. And if you got nobody to watch your children, how are you going to get a job? And and she was struggling. She's still struggling. She's got a job and a new house now. But getting her job to and from their school, and they have to be there at a certain time, and have to leave at a certain time, and you have to find a job within those exact time frames, that's hard. Jobs don't understand. My biggest thing that I've always wanted to do is create a way to bring jobs to mothers and people like that. People that need that certain time, and we can provide that for them. But her, what the point I'm getting at, because that, that needs to also be in the five-year plan. Somebody write that down. But she lost her house and was going homeless. Do you know she called a homeless shelter, and they said we're full? She called a domestic violence shelter because what else was she going to do? And they said, well, you're not dealing with domestic violence, so you can't stay here. I beg to differ the domestic violence that the world's causing me. like. Nobody would take her and her girls in. And that made me so mad. And God worked it out, though. He sure did. And I was proud of her. And God worked it out. But I want to help those that the system, that have fallen into the cracks of the system. That's who I want to help. Yes. The ones that they have said, you're not going to make it, so I'm not going to help. I'll help you. The ones that that uh, don't qualify for homeless shelters and don't qualify for domestic violence, I'll help you. I'll help you. I want to help those who are falling in the cracks of the system. And what's going to make mine different is I'm not just going to give you a place to live. I'm going to teach you about the one who can heal you from the inside out. Amen. Amen. I'm not just going to help you. I'm going to show you the one who you need to start turning to in every situation of your life. Because when you leave this house, you'll still have him to hold on to. I'm not just going to house you. I'm going to, I want to help God get a hold of you. Because when you leave here, I want you transformed from the inside out. Mm. You're not giving a hand out. You're giving a hand up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Whew. Like, Whew. I'm going to, it's on the plan. I'm doing it. I don't know when. I don't know how. But it's going to happen. First, I'm going to get this foundation fixed up. Like, but I got lots of things that we're still going to do. Monica, I'm trying, girlfriend. I just, I be trying. Yeah, we only had this group 15 years ago. Listen, listen, Amanda, let me tell you something. 
Let me tell y'all something. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. If I was the woman I am now, I know that Arthur would still be here. But that's not part of the story. Because that wasn't how it was supposed to be. So what we have to understand, ladies, that have lost somebody in our life, and men, if we have lost somebody in our life, you might not never know why they got removed. But there's a purpose in the pain. Use it. Change it. Go out here and do something about it. Go out here and do something about it. What do you wish you could change? Who do you wish you could help? Now go do that. Go do that. Figure out how to do that. Figure out how to let God use what is in here. And go give him glory out there. With everything that you've got. And it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. You're going to want to quit. But man, will you be fulfilled in your life? And some days you'll be thinking, man, why am I even doing this? This is, this is stupid. I don't want to do this anymore. But then people will come into your life and they'll be like, hey, you can't quit because you changed my life. And you're going to change others. So keep going. It's, it's when people say that to me. It's always a reassurance that I can't quit. Even when I want to on the hardest days. Yes. Yep. Yes. I love that. We can do something about it. Let's finish reading here. The second temple stood apart from the old one in a significant way. There was no evidence God's presence ever enjoyed the second temple. That's true. The verse when Solomon built, uh, the cloud came and well, hovered over it and dwelled there. That's cool. Okay. Jesus' words in Revelation 21-22 reveal that there will be no temple in the new heaven and new earth because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Yet, the very presence of the second temple encouraged God's people as they began their post-exile life together. We are even more blessed than those who come before us. Instead of meeting God in a temple, His Holy Spirit now lives in those who call on Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Amen. The spirit of the living God dwells and dwells every child of God. That is something to truly celebrate, my friend. We don't need anyone to open the door or give us access to God. Jesus did that when he gave his life for us. Yes, he did. We can meet with him anytime, anywhere, and any place. And since Jesus is called the word, wait, and since Jesus is called the word of God, the first and best place to meet with him each day is in the pages of scripture as we are doing throughout these 40 days. Yes. When, where, and how do you meet God? Every morning on Coffee Talk, every morning when I wake up, every time I go outside to my swing, which is what I will be doing all day. Y'all can catch me out there until membership time. Yep. I, me and the Lord got lots to talk about today. We do. We do. We sure do. I got a lot to organize and talk about today. I sure do. I love that, Christina. Listen, I want to... I, just, I got so many plans. And all I need is, is the Lord to send me the people to help me do it. Because I may be going back to school... But I'm also going to create that blessing box, the walk-in blessing box. And I've already decided that that good old Angie is 
she gonna care for that. She's gonna care for that. And it's gonna be awesome. God's gonna bring the right people. And that's what I had to pray for is that I'll do the work, but he's got to bring the right people that, that, that are going to want to help. And I just, I want to travel and speak. I want to write my book. I want to become an author. I want to write devotionals that people go through together. I have a lot I want to do. I have a lot I want to do. So, and all for the glory of God. So we'll see where it goes. And I don't know. We got a lot left to do for the Lord. That's how I know it's not over yet. I'm going to try. I'm going to try my hardest. And if the Lord says go, I'm going to go. And if he says stop, I'm going to stop. I'm going to go where he follows. Give it some time, Anna. Harley, I mean, you could just come live here, too. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll put you somewhere. Listen, you spilled coffee on your new Bible. Can't afford a new one. It's not wrecked, but stained. Ma'am, we character. are all stained. Huh? That's character. That is character. We we are all stained. Oh. And we good. are made as white as snow. It's a reminder. That is a good reminder. We are and that Jesus made us clean. Yes. Oh, yes. Good. Just like my building. There's a wall that's a little leaning. I'm not fixing that. Because that is going to be a reminder that we are perfectly imperfect. We are going to be imperfect. And God's going to use us anyway. He'll use a broken, leaning building. Tell you what, he'll use it. He'll, he'll use everything that's imperfect. He won't use a perfect person. He'll use an imperfect person. Yes, we are going to work on YouTubes today. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to download them to my phone and get them to my computer so that the upload process can be made easier. I promise we are working on the uploads, but they are hard for us to do, but I promise. Like, when it starts, your just phone's just going to be overloaded with new videos. Membership's about to change too. We're gonna change which are things that you're gonna be changing around here, people. I was reading in in in, in First Samuel. I mean, I'm sorry, First Kings. And when you go into there, you're starting. Uh, you David dies and Solomon takes over, and he cleaned up his kingdom. Is what he did. At first, I didn't understand because I was like, man, he killed all these people. What is he doing? And how's he promoting peace when he's killing all these people? He was cleaning up his kingdom of all the people that had betrayed his father and that might betray him. And God said that he couldn't build the temple until there was peace on every side. So Solomon was he cleaning up. Huh? He made peace. He made peace so that he could build the temple. Mm. And he got rid of the things that wouldn't have, have peace in it. And I was like, okay, okay, I see what you did there. I see what you did. Not that we need cleaning up, but we're going to clean up. And we're going to prepare things and we're going to get things ready for the bigger things that God's going to call us to. No. But we are going to change the membership. Oh, that's good. He too Separate. was separating the goats from the sheep. sheep. Oh, that's good, Amanda. Yes. Like, yes. Listen. Yeah, Kim, I love that. We're just going to not change the, we're not changing, y'all calm down. We're not changing things about the membership like that. We are uh, 
we are gonna we're gonna change its name and we're gonna change little things that we do the zooms and everything that we're already doing are gonna stay the same but we're just gonna do little extra things as well yes we are still going to do our Zooms. We're still going to do our downloads. We'll talk about it tonight on Membership Zoom. But I want to add some things to it. It is a, our membership. Uh, it's what we call it right now. It is a Bible study, but it's not a Bible study. It is for people who want to in-depthly study their Bibles. Verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We go through chapters together. We do verse by verse it, and we talk about it. Um, we learn who people are. I teach different study methods. Um, I teach you a lot. Mackenzie, I got you, girl. Around, we gon' we gonna get this. We gonna do it. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah, we are. And we we gonna go even more than we are. I want to start doing those prayers. I really like that prayer. Extra downloads are gonna be put in there. Um, we're gonna do things. It's gonna be good too. Like I'll we'll talk about it tonight on membership Zoom, but it's gonna be good. I think it's Haley home. I think so. I thought I heard I heard something. Well, we are gonna we're gonna do something. Um we're gonna change some things. The word change scares people. Evolving and growing are more acceptable and don't scare much. Oh, I like it. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna grow and evolve. I love you too, girlfriend. We're going to grow and we're going to evolve. And y'all are going to love it. Improving, if you will. Improving. Yes, I like it. We're going to improve it. Yes, that's what we're doing. Um, we're going to give a reason. We're going to give people a reason to want to stay. And um, study. Make adjustments. I like it. Charity and Angie going to start teaching certain classes. Probably not Charity, but we're working on Angie. Mm. 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 We'll get Charity there one day. Don't you worry. Charity was supposed to teach at Romans 14. She I'm was. She still, she still likes to throw up Romans 14, too. I've spent four days with her. <laughs> he sure will. He'll get you through it all. Listen, I don't know. There's just, I'm gonna, we'll talk about it tonight on Zoom. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be just, it's gonna get you encouraged again. And, uh, I do want to say that I got the hiccups. Always remember that motivation is fleeting. It's discipline that will follow you through. So motivation isn't going to, it isn't going to work. It's discipline that will continue your growth and your relationship with Jesus, even when you don't feel like it, okay? Um, we let people, I let y'all vote on like where y'all wanna be in the Bible and then we go there. But we do a whole book straight through. We do a whole book straight through verse by verse. And you get access to all the books that we've already done and all the downloads I've already done. Um, something else I think I'm going to start offering in the membership, y'all tell me, I'm going to do exclusive membership things. Like exclusive t-shirts. And um, 
exclusive classes. Uh, I'm going to do exclusive things. And I've been, I got to plan some of them out, but I'm going to do exclusive things that are just for the membership uh, that help people. And I don't know. I don't, you don't, I don't ever want to grow, what's the, is the word complacent? I don't ever just want to get into the motions and then, I don't ever want to get into the motions and then, you know, you just do the motions. We need to be excited and ready and always trying to be better. And I want that to also be seen in my membership. You're stagnant. You're not, you're not growing. Right. And I always want us to be growing. You know, while we're on earth, we're, we're living in the gap we're supposed to be, you know, because we don't arrive until we, we get to heaven. That, but we're in this sanctification process and we're living in the gap, being a little bit better each day. Looking back to see how far we've come. Yep. So we stay in that gap. Yep. Harley said exclusive camp out at Kelsey's. <laughs> Steve gets the coffee and some more is ready. I love that. That's funny. Bless you. Right on my foot. <laughs> the 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 things that I offer in my membership isn't uh that's why I want to change the name of it. This isn't a membership. This is more like a school. Mm -hmm. You are learning things that people don't even learn in seminary school. We're going through the Bible verse by verse and even when you go to Bible college, you learn things chapter by chapter. You don't do verse by verse. They focus on certain things like themes and topics. Themes and topics, yes. And you just kind of learn about that within the Bible, which is great. But you're learning here. And because of what you're learning, you're changing. And you're actually learning who these people are in the Bible and where they're at and why they're there. And, you know, you're learning so much. This isn't for somebody who just wants a weekly Bible study. This is for somebody who wants to know what the Word of God says and has a deep desire to understand. That's what this is for. And the resources that I provide, you won't find them anywhere else. And I'm confident in that. Because you get access to over 400 downloads. The minute you even use it. So, you do. You do, Melody. You do. I make it to where anybody who joins could understand it. It's $25. It's a subscription and it's $25 a month. And what you pay for is the downloads that you receive, the time I put in to creating the downloads, just like you would buy somebody's book or devotional, of which we just bought. We bought a devotional to go through the Bible and teach us. These are the type of resources that I, that I create, except I create them verse by verse. I create them as breakdowns to help you understand. But you would. We make it super easy. Charity. That would be really cool though, Melody. I think that you could uh, give like lots of insight because I would really like to study that. I was asked, how could I believe in the Bible after being Greek? You can tell them that the original transcripts, um, so it was wrote in Greek, Hebrew, and even um, Arabic. Okay, some of it was wrote in Arabic. So 
they would there wasn't printers at that time right so people would have to hand copy it over and over and over again because of that as time went on and these scrolls and these scribes were found okay they would compile them all together and that's how they got the books of the bible well as time went on more of these scribes and scrolls were found and they were dating back and even older than the ones they had used first okay and how we can be sure that it's accurate is because from the oldest ones they have found to the newest ones they had found, it was 95%. It was either 90 or 95% copied correctly. And the only difference in them was that slang had come into language. So where there would have been a line or a dot, maybe some of the words that they took the lines and the dots out and they ran some of the words together. Those were the only differences in those scrolls. So I don't know about you, but if it's been hundreds of years and I found something that matches up with something else and they're 90% accurate, I'm believing that they're accurate because I can tell a story to somebody and it not make it through five people before that story's different. But those scrolls were found hundreds of years apart and were 90 to 95% accurate. Um, so you, it's $25 a month. You can cancel whenever you want. Um, everything is recorded. So we do live Zooms twice a week and we do digital downloads twice a week. Um, and we have a fellowship, but you don't have to be live for any of it. You can do all of it on your own if you want to. So everything's recorded and posted later, uh, for you to be able to catch up on. I love that, Jennifer. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to get off of here for the day. I have got things to go do. Like sit on my swing and work. <laughs> and maybe take a nap at about like 12. No, uh, Charity wouldn't let me sleep in. But... I love you guys so big, and I hope y'all have a fabulous rest of the day, and I'll see y'all on membership tonight, and we got lots of fellowship and talking to do, but we will also study, um, but just prepare for that. Um, I got questions and things we need to talk about, so we're going to do that, and then we will do our studies, but I love you guys so big, and I hope y'all have a fabulous day, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, guys.